Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I'm going to show you a haul of used books today. Earlier in the year, Criminali reviewed a men's adventure series called Nick Carter. And Nick Carter is a series of adventures that started in 1895, and it morphed from magazines pulp novels. And um, I was quite intrigued by his description of his, his, uh, his books. And then a little over two months ago, somewhere about that, um, as I was getting ready for Garb August, I was in a used bookstore in, in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I came across one of the uh, Executioner series. Uh, not sorry, the Nick Carter series called The Executioner. And I went ahead and bought it. It was... Um, $5.50, which is kind of expensive for an old paperback, I think, but, you know, it was all right. And I read it last, was it two weeks ago? About two weeks ago for Garb August, and um, this is not high literature. This is not highbrow. This is very trashy men's adventure fiction, and men's adventure fiction where you get um, all the female characters described um, through their breasts, and their breasts are described in loving detail. Um, but it was a pretty cool adventure series, so I decided to go out and buy more. And I went out on eBay, and I found a lot of uh, Nick Carter adventure books, 15 of them for $5 plus shipping. So I'm getting $15, 15 books for 50 cents less than I, I paid for mine in Virginia. But that's okay. So what did I get? Now, I'm fairly certain the book that I bought is um, going to be repeated in this box. So let's open it. And this is the box. And just to uh, show off my inner punk child. Let's open the box. There we go. Let's see what we got. Paper. First book is Checkmate in Rio. Nick Carter is the top agent of Axe, America's super secret intelligence force. He is suave and ruthless among fellow agents. He is known as Killmaster. Axe's man in Rio wasn't there anymore. In fact, the whole intelligence apparatus that has been built up with such care, operated with such cunning, had just been winked out like a series of shorted TV tubes. National security, violence, and a mysterious woman. The assignment had to be Nick Carter. Oh, and here we go again. Like I said... This is my duplicate of the executioners. Nick Carter watched the ship, the U.S. Navy cruiser. It was aflame. Over a thousand men were dying on it. One of America's most trusted allies had caused the carnage, a terrible accident, the U.S. said, and everyone forgot about it. But then came the next accident, and the next, and the pile of corpses grew higher. Well, this is a duplicate. So um, if anyone wants this Nick Carter adventure, leave a comment below. Say something like, gimme, and um, I will send this book off to you. If more than one person wants this book, I'll do sort of a raffle and um, see who gets it. I will ship international. Nick Carter, the third. Teenth spy. Oh, there's a nice, lovely young lady on the cover. Let's see if I can do this. He stepped off a TU-104 at Moscow Airport. He was Ivan Kolakanshka, a man with two interests in life. Research for his new novel in a rendezvous with Sonia the willowy ballerina from the Bolshoi. Mm. 
only he really wasn't Ivan. He was Tom Slade, a trusted agent of Axe, America's super secret intelligence force. And he wasn't really Tom Slade either, but Nick Carter. Is that enough to pique your interest? Enough to pique my interest. Ice, trap, terror. Killmaster had fought madmen before, but never won with the colonel's cunning, fanatical lust for power. For this man was not only a lunatic with his formidable scientific genius, he had actually invented a new ice age to destroy the world. You know? Global warming, ice age, which one do we want? Already the snow was falling. A seriously wounded Nick Carter has to forge his way across a frozen continent to stop the ice machines before they froze the planet, battling Killmaster every inch of the way. The Colonel's crack troops, his only ally, Wait for it. A beautiful Russian agent with orders to kill him as soon as she can. Probably right after she takes him to bed. The human time bomb. A nightmare assignment. Something strange was going on at the Reed Furben chemical plant. Something that threatened America's entire defense network. Something evil. No one outside knew what it was. And if they did, they wouldn't talk. And if they talked, they didn't live long. And if Axe didn't have answers soon, it would be too late to care. That's when Nick Carter Killmaster N3 moved in on a voluptuous mountain girl with the right connections. On a beautiful scientist with highly classified secrets. On an impossible mission where violence and murder were stranded operating, were standard operating procedure. And the horrifying resemblance between persons living and dead was anything but coincidence. The Nikachiva, Nick, Nikachivov plot. Soviet premier disappears in Washington. Pravda screamed for war. The CIA and the FBI were helpless. Axe had one lead. A telegram that said Nikocheyev would be executed in four days and was signed, The Great Mother, who is death. Kali? And the old man of the mountains, who is her deputy on earth. Nick Carter had little time to locate the headquarters of the International Organization of Death-Worshipping cult Occultists who had behind a smokescreen of comparative religion, practice human sacrifice. They killed one, they killed for one reason. They worshiped death and were addicted to it. The Arab Plague. A shock thriller, impossible to put down a primitive Arab town tormented by a merciless, a merciless sun, a sinking hellhole called the slave market, the merchant of human flesh who doubles as a spy, an American agent grown soft on the job, strange pieces of an espionage puzzle Nick Carter must solve. It begins the sellout of intelligence information. It climaxes 
in a nightmare struggle for power that must but can't be won. The Arab Plague. The Bright Blue Death. A frenzied mob howling for violence. They called themselves the Teutonic Knights, neo-Nazi hoodlums thirsting to avenge the fatherland. They were led by a half-med genius with dreams of ruling the world and means to destroy it, and the means to, means to destroy it if anyone dared resist. The first step had already been taken carefully selected victims, each vital to his country's survival, were dying, were being murdered of a mysterious, hideous, painful disease. It was Nick Carter's job to destroy this madness with success riding on two sultry, sensuous women. The scornful, headstrong Swede who was supposed to be N3's partner, and the treacherous, amoral American who was his enemy. I'm sure their breasts are going to be described in loving detail. The Mind Poisoners. America's Super Spy. Campus riots. The student peace movement was anything but peaceful. Suddenly, it swept beyond the bounds of democratic demonstration into widespread mass rioting that approached the state of insurrection and civil war. Cars were overturned, burned. Girls were drawn into wild, sadistic orgies. Hordes of students were catapulted into an incredible vortex of violence. The entire nation rocked in stunned horror. And as the hideous madness spread from campus to campus, Axe agent Nick Carter assumed the identity of a college professor where he taught some of his students wouldn't be found. What he taught some of his students wouldn't be found in any library. What he learned from them made his skin crawl. It went beyond radicalism. It was the ruthless plot of an organization of mind poisoners who couldn't have cared less about the ruined lives of thousands of students they made into instruments of national downfall. Man, this box keeps on going for five dollars. Assassin, codename Vulture. The Death Dealer. He was highly paid professional, killing anyone, anywhere, for a price. A murderer who relished his work, lovingly watched each victim rise in blood. The intelligence establishment named him the vulture, the secret vulture, his mechanized talons dripping with human blood. Destroying the vulture was Nick Carter's next assignment. But before Nick, before Carter could get his lethal quarry, he had to hunt down another man, a bizarre double agent of the vulture, who forced into becoming the assassin's perfect weapon and his next agonized victim. The Coyote Connection. On a mission of assassination, a group of Mideast terrorists began their underground journey to the U.S. The point of entry, the Brownsville Matromas region of Texas. Method to slip in with the masses of illegal aliens to make it across the border daily. Identities unknown. And if Nick Carter didn't stop them, dead. 
the legislative powers of the U.S. will grind to a quick halt with panic not far behind. Now, it mentioned illegal aliens, panic about illegal aliens, and um, this book was um, written in 1981. Things don't change. The Defector. Ooh, nice old cover. She's not wearing the top. The Theft of the Deadly Formula. The School for Red Spies. The Army of Man-Eating Rats. The exotic, the exotic House of Pleasure. The Diamond Dagger Caked with Blood. The Hidden Pellet of Cyanide. All of them played a vital part in Nick Carter's latest assignment prevent a top American scientist from defecting to China. Nick had only one lead, a beautiful woman with a special fondness for specs, sex spiced with savagery. Close to the end. Berlin. The first man knew too much, so they shattered his body in a thousand pieces before he could give a share, a shred of information. The second man lived in terror. Death had pursued him through a lifelong devoted to espionage. And when they pumped a bullet into through his throat, he was not even surprised. The third man was a lot tougher to knock off. His name was Nick. Carter, and he was ordered to pursue the assignment that had killed the other two. Assassination Brigade. Where did it begin, this 24-hour communications blockout that nearly triggered World War III? Why? was one of Europe's most respected banking combines and declared bankruptcy, its billions vanishing into thin air. What has caused this terrifying series of plane crashes through the world, deliberately engineered by pilots who, against their will, became instruments of their own deaths? How? have the top security secrets of the Earth's most powerful countries suddenly leaked into enemy camps as if minds were being read. Who was behind the series of near assassinations of world figures by unlikely killers who then commit suicide? The Chinese In a small Chinese village, an old scientist is executed without trial. The next day, Peking papers carry stories of the sudden regrettable suicide, and the CIA knows it has lost one of its most valuable agents. At the edge of a Laotian jungle, an American officer and his guerrilla band are bombed by Chinese planes. The Chinese later apologize for their accidental airspace violation, but an important guerrilla operation has been sabotaged. In a posh New York bar, Thailand's UN delegate slumps to the floor. The official verdict, heart failure. Actually, someone has sprayed deadly cyanide gas into the diplomat's face only hours before he was to vote against China. Linking these murders in an enemy agent only known as the, the Red Chinese Paymaster. The agent's face unknown. Method of operation strictly from within inside U.S. intelligence. Whereabouts aboard a transatlantic jet on the first lap of a charter flight around the world. It is up to Nick Carter to find him or her among the plane's passengers, except someone has betrayed N3 
and the Chinese move in for the kill long before he has a chance to board the plane. And that is this overly long video of Nick Carter books. Um, if you watch this whole thing, thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you want this copy of The Executioners. Keep on reading.